nothing at all. Oh, nothing. <laughs> Welcome back to the Nutrient Report. This is the time when we have our report from Chris Harris. That's his radio name, our, our Nuclear Regulatory Commission safety expert. And Chris, uh, you mentioned that it's a relatively quiet time, although there's some shocking statements out there uh, that they, quote, stopped a significant leak in Fukushima. Tell us about why they spun the story and what what was the so-called leak and what was the source of the leak. Well, well Dr. Bill, let me just, let me just say the, the, the lack of news this week, they, I, I use that as an example of what good news would be, and that didn't happen. Of what so, good news would be? That's funny. All right. That would, <laughs> well, yeah, in other words, that's correct. I was trying to... I was trying to uh, relate something that was uh, you know, that didn't happen. See, it's a quiet news week, which you know it puts people to sleep when that happens. You know, it's like, well, I guess there's not much going on at Fukushima. Well, yes, there's a lot going on there. In fact, that but it's not being reported. Really- of course, when the news is that they stopped a big leak, it's like, duh, I didn't know there was a leak in the first place. So, w- well, what was leaking, leaking, and what did they stop? Well, okay. Well, I'm just going to say everything has been leaking, and that nothing mm-hmm. got stopped, and they didn't report it as such. What they did do is they didn't report anything, and in other words, the situation is as it was at Fukushima since the last time we talked about it, that being tons of water, uh, groundwater entering the uh, uh, turbine buildings that are highly contaminated and the other uh, buildings that are leaving Fukushima for the ocean, uh, washing away radionuclides, uh, background radiation in areas, See, this is all actual news right here. Background ranges are still high in areas surrounding Fukushima, uh, close to 2 millirem in some areas. Uh, uh, Carolyn Kennedy, the ambassador, uh, took a visit to Fukushima, and if you'll notice, everybody there has, still is wearing uh, uh, protective gear, like um, respirators, full-face respirators, and uh, in in anti-contamination clothing because the contamination levels are still very high. Nothing's going down. So, I mean, in other words, that's that's what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to, like, tongue-in-cheek. If there was any kind of news at all, I would like to see some good news. Right, but but they didn't didn't give give you a specific as to what was leaking and what was not. No, 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 no. No, they just tell you, we did something great. We're not going to give you any more details, but it's good news. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's, you pretty, know, but, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> so well, here's the, well, here's the next question. We know the volcanism is occurring, occurring around the world. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had the largest earthquake since uh, March 11th, three years ago, in Japan. Uh, it's pretty well a guarantee in the next year or two, we're going to have a level of earthquake large enough to knock over these buildings, which means at some point in, the, say, the next 18 months, we're probably going to have a massive radiation release. Now, what's the consequence? They have a blocking high. We mentioned it on the Rents Network program because Jeff actually found this, and I confirmed it. We've had weathermen on, including meteorologist pilots, that have confirmed that there's a blocking high out in the Pacific to prevent any storm systems moving from the North Pacific, where most of the water that comes to the west coast of the United States and Canada comes from, which is why we're having such a horrible drought. Uh, yesterday, literally, you could sit, we were at 1,200 feet, <clears throat> in every direction, Around 30 miles around us, there was a fire. There were nine fires going. Somebody's probably an arsonist, according to the fire marshal, uh, setting them. But the, the ground is like tinder. It's so dry, it's like a cracker here. It's crazy. And the temperatures today are well over 100 degrees. But it's not just the temperature. It's the humidity level is insanely low for a coastal area. And the weather systems are moving air from the desert over here, because we have desert air, instead of because the systems are being blocked from the North Pacific. Now, why is that significant? Because when massive radiation release happens, they're not going to just be able to block it with blocking weather systems. It means that people are going to start getting acutely sick, and they may not directly link it. Their doctors are not trained in toxicology, uh, immunology, or uh, these kind of very silent killers. For example, you'll see more people get atrial defibrillation, chronic fatigue, uh, myopathies, you know, myofficial pain syndromes, all kinds of things. It'll be nondescript, people getting much more alert, allergic because charged particles attach to allergens, these hot fleas, and they make the alert allergen particle in the air far more allergenic. <clears throat> so it's going to be subtle, but people are going to start getting acute on chronic radiation sickness. Now, they're panicking because they know if you have 320 million Americans that suddenly realize that they've been duped and the government's doing nothing but actually preparing them to die 
from a chronic accumulative long-acting radioisotopes like strontium-90 and cesium 137 Obama and his administration, the IAEA, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, are doing zip. Zip. They're basically saying, we don't care if the population in America gets as sick as the Japanese where their birth rate is zero. We don't care if people have 12-year-olds dying of cardiac arrest from cardiac arrhythmias from cesium-137. We don't care if people end up becoming lobotomized zombies caused by radiation sickness. We don't care if people get bloody diarrhea and bloating or their immune system failures that get acute leukemia or aplastic anemia or autoimmune disease. We don't give a rat's behind. That's what the governments are saying by their inaction. And I think that they basically Agenda 21, World Population Reduction, this is an active, not a passive process, and Fukushima is just a start because a major quake is not just going to hit Fukushima in northern Japan, it's going to hit five other sites that are likely to go down that are already structurally damaged. It also means that the push which Obama's done to give equipment to the Israelis to hit the Bashir reactor is likely to go. And there's around the world, out of 500 and some reactor sites, <clears throat> some with more than one reactor, at least half of them are in the strike zone of an earthquake. So volcanism is increasing dramatically because there's lots of evidence, and I put it up before, that we have an approaching red dwarf star. I don't know how far away it is, but the evidence is accumulating over the past 30 years that a red dwarf star is coming into our inner solar system. The first real serious was the hyper elliptical comets coming in, the action at a distance, the changes in the weather systems on all the planets in our inner solar system. Uh, we're seeing electrophysiological and other effects on gravitonics and volcanology that's dramatically increasing not only weird solar activity, but also increasing the chances we're going to have a major volcanic eruption. We have Yellowstone, where the animals are smart enough, they're taken off. We have volcanism everywhere, major quakes in South America, along the Ring of Fire. <clears throat> and here in America, where JASCO, the last director of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, put forward the study, uh, they're awfully slow at reporting <clears throat> exactly what their consequences are going to be. It's almost like their study says, well, we did enough study that in these serious reactors, we need to study more. So the study basically says, one, Annan, which we talked about last week, is failing, but all the other reactors, they don't look good, but we're going to study them more. That's all I get out of it so far. I don't get a immediate condemnation of, like, we need billions of dollars so that these reactors don't lose their control and vent off massive amounts of radiation to their local populations. What I hear is the study says, it's so bad, we better study this more. If, am I wrong, or is that pretty good analysis of it? No, exactly correct. You remember from, from last week, we picked apart several of those uh, technical reports right on your program, and basically we know that something is wrong, we know something has to get fixed, let's study it more to figure out exactly well, what first it is. Well, first off, hit the nail right on the head. Let me give you the benchmarks, because uh, I have background that covers a wide range of things. So if I did a plant walkthrough, I wouldn't just talk about the areas where people are going to bump their head in an over, uh, header or get a back injury from certain things. I'd actually analyze the chemical production, the gas areas, the valve systems, the control systems, the alarm systems, etc. And what they need to do is they need to go around the entire plant, make a structural simulated computer model, go around with ultrasound and actually of every joint, every structural member of those reactors, and generate real data and analyze exactly where the reactors are likely to <clears throat> have a structural failure. Then they need to have the kind of thrust data in terms of the kind of vibrations that are likely to be generated and what frequency they are based on data accumulated in that specific area. I guess they'll have that. <coughs> they need to put that data in terms of horizontal and vertical thrust. If you have, for example, in LA, those earthquakes are likely to be what's called upthrust earthquakes. So it's a different waveform. Uh, that's why one building will be destroyed and another will not because the building has to have harmonics similar to the frequency of the earthquake. If those frequencies are not similar and they don't accumulate in the structure causing giant waves, there's no structural damage. So they can figure this out with computer modeling and that they don't need to do more studies, they need to gather data and model it. Then they came up with a very quick answer of what needs to be done and where they need to structurally reinforce the structure not to break down. Person, they can live with all kinds of crap. They're totally in conflict. <clears throat> Welcome back, Ann Chris. Um, 
So yeah, so what we have is a series of what I call tap dancing uh, nuclear journalists trying to kind of tell us we're going to study it more because it's so bad. Well, guess what? I laid out the benchmarks. It's going to be in my updated book, which will be released here very shortly. Uh, it'll be in a summary article, which we have posted here at Nutra Medical and over on Rens's website. And you've been a major part of contribution in this. And so even though it's your radio name, you've been a major part of contributing to this information analysis. And as I say, the tagline for the show, if there's only one thing you remember, is ask better questions. Because if you don't ask better questions, you're not going to own the truth. And if you own, don't own the truth, you're not going to do anything about it. Uh, you cannot listen to the pundits on the news media, the IAEA, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, uh, because there are all kinds of forces trying to tell them that, no, I, I don't say that, though. Even Arndy Gunderson, you can see him toning down things to say, well, it's not that bad. It's this or that. I'm thinking, no, people need to know the whole truth. This is an extinction-level event that, over time, not only what's going on in Fukushima, but at other nuclear sites around the world with major earthquakes, that we could have, or even just with a power blackout. Let's say you got a great CME off the sun or a red dwarf star, which generates a CME hundreds of times more powerful than the sun can, you could have an extinction level event occur with just the nuclear reactors blowing all over the planet just because they don't have backup power. Uh, <clears throat> if the Nemadrid fault system happened, there's at least 25 reactor sites that all have these old style reactors that immediately are going to go into default and will not be able to maintain containment, period. So we're not just talking about Fukushima, we're talking about the South e uh, Eastern United States becoming a radioactive dead zone. And people don't grasp that. They don't understand just how stupid and how incompetent our government is. Our president, our Congress, and our Senate, I talked to these morons, and I worked with the people at the FBI and CDC. These people take stupidity to an Olympic level, along with evil. And we need to call it out straight to say, look, there's an IQ gap of about 30 points between the public and the so-called rulers and the bureaucrats that rule us. They're dangerous, stupid, conflicted, corrupted, and have walking around with all kinds of cognitive dissonance. You can't just play with these issues and have a sharp pencil. So, uh, Chris, where the heck do you think this is going? Because I really see disaster. I see radiation sickness that doctors won't recognize, that it's going to start really hitting people in the next years. We have those snowy owls dying along the coast. We have accumulation of pine needles. We have dead sea life, sea lions. We have shrinkage of their brains. We have stress and algae that are causing increased demoic acid. It's not just ultraviolet light. It's radiation stress from Fukushima, accumulating bio uh, levels of cesium-137, strontium-90, plutonium, etc. All these stressors increase demoic acid, which causes acetylcholine pathways to be permanently blocked. <clears throat> Where I see things going is not good. I see increasing release of radiation from Fukushima that's going to further damage the ozone layer, further cause major ground-level ultraviolet light, and by the way, one of the theses, and I mentioned multi causes for the loss of the bees. The bees are being lost because the geomagnetic field of the Earth is disrupted. The ultraviolet light's burning their eyes out, so they're going blind. We're seeing neonicotinoid pesticides, which now are banned in Europe, so that's a major contributing factor. We see the overgrowth of mites and other pathogens, which produce mycotoxins. But the worst of all those factors is ultraviolet light. And it's caused by things like Fukushima. And after Fukushima blew, the amount of radiation getting to ground level was dramatically higher. So if you don't wear good protective eyewear, or if you're a, a, a surfer and you go out in the oceans, you're going to get a, at least a pterygian, which is growth across your central visual axis, or you're going to get retinal damage, or you're going to come down with skin cancer, or any one of the combination of the above. And if you don't listen to me, because I'm an expert on these areas, you're going to suffer. So you need to take notice now. You're not going to hear this in other shows on this network or elsewhere, except through me. And the reason why I say this is because I have the expertise and the guts to stand up and say, this is what's happening, and we know the scientific facts that we can solve it, but they don't want to. That, to me, is a monumental crime of omission, that we're not doing anything to intervene. Chris, where do you think this is going? Because I see Fukushima as an example, and are kind of whitewashing the JASCO reports and saying we need to study this more. Uh, what do they want to do? Study it until we have a major quake in New Madrid? Do they want to study it until we have a major, you know, look at what happened at the WIP facility <clears throat> in New Mexico. Uh, this facility was hit by hydrofracking. We know that I just talked to Ryan, he was on the second hour. They had a major quake there in Oklahoma, near Edmond, Oklahoma, 
probably caused by hydrofracking. Most people don't realize hydrofracking is not only poisoning the water table and destroying it, but it's a major trigger for earthquakes. This is not funny. And they need to grasp just how dangerous it is. And the public's out there just walking around, going shopping, going to the restaurants, and doing their thing and thinking, Dr. Deagle's nuts. I feel so secure that he's crazy. I won't listen to anything he says because everybody else and my doctor thinks he's crazy and my politician thinks he's crazy and everybody thinks he's crazy because if he was correct, I would be cringing in fear and I don't want that. So my best mental health procedure is to think he's just crazy. Well, guess what? Take it out of the day at Hominem. I don't care what you think about me. Think of it this way. Just ask the questions and research it yourself. If you look at this data, you say, oh my God, it's an oh my G mo moment. <laughs> OMG yeah. moment here, coming at you. <laughs> you know, they, what are you going to do? What are you going to do when, when your wife miscarries because she has a ball of unorganized cells coming out of her? What are you going to do when you've got a cardiac arrhythmia or your son's acting like their autism is getting significantly worse because cesium is concentrating in his frontal lobes? What are you going to do when you got bloody diarrhea and a nosebleed and you realize you've been radiationally poisoned? What are you going to do when the teeth fall out of your head? What are you going to do when you get problems with, you know, cancer, precancer, all kinds of muscle wasting, cardiac arrhythmias, myofascial pain syndromes, cardiac congestive heart failure. These are the things that are going to sneak up and bite a lot of our population. The unborn, they're really going to get smacked down. There was a 42% increase in fetal in, in, in neonatal intensive care unit death in a ICN in Pennsylvania within the first three months after Fukushima. 42%. That's a long way from Japan, okay? So you need to understand that there's published reports now that saying in the first six months alone, there were 22,000 Americans that died prematurely because of Fukushima. This is three years plus on now. And the longer acting isotopes are considerably more dangerous than radioiodine. If you just have adequate levels of nitriodine in your body, the radioiodine is going to do nothing. But now you've got strontium and cesium and other long acting isotopes taking off like a rocket. We're in deep, deep trouble. Not just the snowy owls and the sea lions and the krill and the sardines and the salmon run. We're in deep doo doo. And they're getting ready to call the human herd. You've got to understand this. They don't want us. The future does not want us. The globalist billionaires don't want us. They want life extension technology. They want to have dome cities to protect themselves from the screw-ups of the environment they're doing. They want to get rid of most of us. And if you think, oh, that's just a bizarre conspiracy theory, you're going to face some ugly future events that are going to be more dystopic than any horrifying movie you ever see on the big screen. You have to understand this. This is real. And they're published articles right in Agenda 21, the World Watch Institute, the United Nations documents. I mean, it's, it goes on ad hominem, and they're bold enough to tell you straight up what they're going to do because it's part of their religion. They have to do it because if you're an idiot, you won't believe them and because you're a victim. You're, not, you're a profane person. And if you're aware of it, they sh actually show you some respect. So one of the reasons why I'm still walking and talking is they think I'm one of them acting with a white hat. That's how nuts these people are. Because I understand them, they think, well, he's just one of us, because he knows everything. Right down to the most ugly, nasty things, because he must be one of us. Nobody would have the nerve to say this, or tell all the truth, unless he was, quote, hoodwinking them. And that's their whole process. They hoodwink, you know, eyes wide shut. They hoodwink before they kill, <laughs> okay? So what do you think, uh, Chris? This is so nuts. And when I have people that want to even waste my time by doing it, having them, I said, I'm on this earth a limited number of days, weeks, hours, and months. I don't give a rat's behind what you think about me. I do love you out there, and I care for you just like God cares for you. He's given, my, he's given me his compassion to pass on to you the fact that I will try to protect you, mostly from your own ignorance and stupidity in, a, in action. Don't believe the liars. When they hear a news report that we've stopped the leak, what was leaking? Oh boy. How bad was the leak? It was a good week because we stopped the leak. That's great. That should be the headline. We stopped the leak. Your We're comment, not going to uh, stop asking questions. Uh, We're not going to stop entertaining the uh, all the issues involved, and we're still not going to stop digging, no matter, even if they did uh, punish uh, Fukushima Diaries by removing their PayPal accounts this week because uh, 
he was getting too close to the truth. Get, get, things like when that. My, when my e book comes stop. out, it's going to blow the lid off this into orbit. Correct. It's going to blow it into orbit. People are going to start reading it and say, oh my God. Whether they're a nuclear physicist, a safety engineer, a politician, a mother with children, they're going to go crazy.